climatic factors. Woo! Nearly didn't make it home before the rain started. Glad I cut you off when I did. Yes, but now you have no excuse but to listen. Ah, uh, can I at least make some coffee first? Okay, fine. I will take tea. I want to discuss the weather elements. What do you mean? Like rainfall, temperature, wind, relative humidity, and light? I learned a bit about it in geography class. Glad to hear you are finally paying attention somewhere. Considering the current situation, let us talk about the importance of this rain, even if it does ruin our plants. But I'm already aware that plants need water to grow. That is a good start, but what you need to know is that different crops require different amounts and distribution of rain. Knowing the rain's reliability helps farmers plan crop planting accordingly. So the more rain, the better? Um, not always, but that depends on the plan. But a higher rainfall intensity could result in flooding and damage to the soil and crops. In the dry areas of Kenya, it always seems so hot. How do those plants work in such an environment? Well, temperature is another factor to consider when choosing what crop to grow. Pineapples and oranges, for example, do very well in high temperature areas. But these will come with an increase in evaporation rates, leading to wilting of crops and an increase in incidences of disease and plant infection. So, what plants are better for low temperatures then? Good question. Tea and pyrethrum improve in cooler temperatures. That is why they are found in the Kenya Highland areas. But the lower Celsius numbers means photosynthesis is slowed and diseases such as Elgon dieback are very common. So the temperature has to be just right for them to grow. Yes. And the range for them to be able to grow is the cardinal range. Now, the specific range that plants grow best within it is called the optimum range. Now, that is where crops can really thrive. Oh, listen to that wind. Yeah, the wind is a powerful force to be reckoned with. It can damage crops by ripping them out of the ground, harm the soil, and it could also damage farm structures. But wind, on the other hand, can help by pushing rain clouds to us, help with seed dispersal, and help cool dry areas. It's also helpful in promoting evapotranspiration rights. Eva who? Um, before I explain that, you must know what relative humidity is. Relative humidity is the amount of water vapor held by the air at a given temperature compared to what it would hold when it is saturated. Oh yes, I learned about this. Evapotranspiration is a collective term that describes the water loss from the soil and leaf pores. High humidity means low evapotranspiration. Correct. I admire your geography teacher to get something into that thick sky. Now, along the coast of Kenya, the relative humidity is higher, and plants such as coconuts and cashew nuts do well with a lot of moisture. Oh, the rain is finally stopping, and look how bright it is now, like a new day. Yeah, without the sun, life on earth wouldn't be possible. The light it gives to us is very important. Did you know, for instance, that it takes 8 minutes for light to travel from the sun to earth? That is a long time. Think about how much distance it has to cover. Pretty fast, I would say. So, why do we need light anyways? You are a fool. We cannot see without light, but beside that simple fact, light enables plants to complete the process known as photosynthesis. Why do we have plants inside our house away from the sun then? Uh, good observation. Different plants and crops vary on three aspects of light. The intensity of light, which is the strength that the light is absorbed by the plant's chlorophyll, and the optimal amount of light depends on the crop. Seedlings need a lot more light than our indoor plants. But the indoor plants still need some light, correct? Yes. And that depends on the duration or amount of light needed in a day. Short day plants, 
such as rice, tobacco, and soya beans, need less than 12 hours of light. Long-day plants, such as wheat varieties, need one more than 12 hours. I uh, want to guess what day neutral plants mean. They need about 12 hours of light. Correct. And such plants include coffee, maize, and beans. And that is why they are mostly found around the equator. Couldn't we just put a light bulb on the plants if they weren't getting enough sun? Uh, you need a special kind of bulb. Now, that brings me to the wavelength of light. A standard light bulb is artificial light that chlorophyll does not absorb for growth. The sun's light has a special wavelength that includes ultraviolet and infrared. Can you grow plants outside of their normal habitat? Yes! Of course, with greenhouses and glasshouses that help make a certain environment for the plants. All right, now that it stopped raining, can we go for a walk? I want to play in the mud. Okay, let's go look at the soil.